Welcome to the Right Flood On Demand webinar, Never a Better Time to Sell Flood. Hi, I'm Dolores Glass, Senior Communications Manager, and today we're going to talk about how this is the best time to sell flood insurance. We're going to cover the flood insurance awareness right now and some of the things that have brought that about. We'll look at some visuals that are going to help you make the sale, videos, maps, brochures about flood insurance that are available to you. We're going to show you how to make it personal when you quote flood for your your customer and that you can sell with confidence because you'll be knowledgeable of the NFIP products and Right Flood will be there to help you keep your product in compliance as you offer one of the best choices for your customer, whether it be the preferred risk policy, the subsidized policy for your customer, whether your customer has an elevation certificate, if map changes are impacting the way your customer is looking at flood insurance, and then, of course, if they reject the policy that you're offering, you're going to rock that rejection waiver. And the extreme weather events that we've seen are simply an invitation for you to build your flood sales that you're agency. And then at the end, we're going to offer two pages full of resourceful tips and tools that you can use to train your staff to become flood knowledgeable yourself and to make that flood sale personal for your client. So flood insurance awareness has never been higher than right now. With the flood reforms been in the news, since July 6th of 2012, when the flood reform was passed by Congress, in October when we, in 2013, when we enacted the first part of the Bigger Waters 2012 flood reforms, and then many people impacted by that, it really represented 20% of the people involved with flood insurance, but they were very vocal, they spoke to their congressmen, and as a result, just this past March of 2014, we saw the Homeowners Flood Insurance Affordability Act passed, which brought the subsidized rates back without elevation certificate requirements for those structures that uh, represent 20% of the flood business, which would be the pre-firm before the flood insurance rate map and in the high risk zones of A or V. So, We've seen the flood reforms. We've seen uh, the community's reaction to the flood reforms and Congress uh, respond to that. We've seen a premium cap put in place by the Homeowners Flood Insurance Affordability Act, which allows the real estate market to be more comfortable, both buyers and sellers, with how the flood premiums are going to advance in the future uh, up to a maximum of 18% for primary residences. We've seen map changes across the country, which are a result of the improved technology in the mapping brought down to the flood maps, helping everyone get a better eye view of exactly what their flood risk is. And of course, we've seen severe weather, be it drought or fire or, of course, flood, that all eventually impact the risk of flooding, which is the major natural disaster that impacts, impacts more people across the country. And looking at all of the awareness for flood insurance, we realize that it's really not complicated. It has to be personal. Each person has to look at their property, their risk, and make their own decisions about flood insurance. So we're going to talk a little bit today about how to help you make it personal. So when everyone's talking about flood insurance, one of the ways that you can uh, capitalize on this would be to become the flood expert in your town, to let it be known to all of your current uh, policyholders that you're working with and let it be known in your community that you are very active in flood insurance, that you've kept up with the flood reforms. You know now what parts of the NFIP can serve each different property owner, and you can help them when flood insurance becomes their issue and comes to mind for them. You can draw the flood risk picture for each property owner. 
each owner has to look at their structure. They have to look at their position on the flood map, whether it's a high risk zone or a low to moderate risk zone. They have to look at their financial situation and decide for themselves if flood insurance is important to them. If they are deciding that flood insurance is important and if if they walk into your agent's office and they don't ask straight out for a flood policy, then you can pretty much feel that you could quote them a flood policy and feel comfortable that they are going to be a preferred risk policy quote. Now, of course, you're going to go into our system and use the flood quoting tools and do a zone determination to find out exactly what flood zone they're in as part of our quoting, but it's going to be fairly easy if they haven't asked you straight out for a flood quote to know that they're going to be in the low risk zone and that quote is going to be pretty simple for you to complete. So you're going to let everyone know that you're the flood expert. You're going to draw the picture for each person. You're going to quote them flood for each property owner that, that walks into your office. And then you can also cross-sell flood insurance to all of your existing clients that may not yet have purchased that flood policy simply by sending them a marketing letter a brochure and letting them know that you're the flood expert. And you can also ask any of your existing clients that may have flood coverage with another agent to transfer that flood policy to you. You can be their flood expert. You're selling all their other flood, other, other property coverages, and you can also get that flood policy transferred to you and then transferred to right flood if they're not with, with right flood currently. So when you are talking about flood insurance to your clients, when you're helping them to make it personal and helping them to understand their risk, right flood is your ace. Uh, you're selling Right Flood as the nation's largest flood insurance company. We're focusing solely on flood insurance. Everyone who's touching your policy in the Right Flood policy is a Right Flood associate teammate, and we are all working together to make sure that the right flood policy holders can have full benefit of the flood policy. We're known for our claims handling, starting with Katrina, Ike, Rita, and most recently with Sandy. We have more than 30 years of federal flood insurance, and when you're selling the right flood policy, letting your insureds know that that's who you're working with is a selling advantage to you. Right flood policies are written and fully underwritten in the very beginning as, client, as the policies are put in place. And that is an advantage to you and your policyholder because then the policy is ready should there be any flood claim. There's no stepping back to do any additional underwriting. Your claims will be ready for resolution because they're written and fully underwritten in the beginning. The online flood quoting system at Right Flood has the flood underwriting built into it. So it's going to ask you the questions and lead you through until you reach a fully compliant flood policy with the NFIP. Again, this is your advantage because then you know it's ready for that claim to be settled immediately should that come to pass. Right Flood is also your partner through the flood reforms. We're keeping you up to date on what messaging you should tell your clients about the flood reforms and making sure that you're fully informed about how to handle the policies that are affected by the flood reforms. So you can talk flood, specifically talk right flood, with full confidence. You have a regional sales manager. You have all the tools and talking points. You have the communications, the map changes, and the brochures all set up so that you can be confident that the flood policy you're selling is going to be the best for your client and that we're going to help you through all the compliance pieces you need to make sure that occurs. So you're going to share all that you know about the flood um, policy and the flood reforms and all the flood facts with your community using your website, and hopefully you have flood-specific pages on your website. 
You can put flood messages on your Facebook or send out email marketing newsletters to your current policyholders. You can also talk to community events about flood insurance, such as if your community is having flood reform meetings, if the real estate uh, industry in your area is concerned about flood insurance and considerations about that, many of the other organizations like Kiwanis and Rotary are having uh, meetings where they want to discuss flood insurance for their property owners. Disaster preparedness meetings are underway because we're in the middle of hurricane season. And also, uh, with the flood reforms, there are many community meetings being held where people are concerned about what they're going to do with flood insurance in their area. At those meetings, the best way to let people know that you're prepared to talk flood with them is to have a handout or a brochure from FEMA or Right Flood covering the topic of the meeting, whether it be the new flood reforms or whether it be map changes in your area. There are brochures and handouts available through Right Flood to address that. And you can put your agency contact information on them so that when property owners take those handouts home, they're going to have a connection to you to get back in touch and so you can help sell that flood policy. You're going to make a flood offer to all the non-flood clients in your book of business once a year so that they're thinking about flood once a year and you're helping them to cover their flood risk. It also covers your agency E&O that you're offering your clients flood insurance. And then you're going to include flood topics on Facebook, Twitter, email marketing, even if it's just covering an event in your uh state, a flood event in your state, that serves to keep flood in, in forefront of people's minds. And you can establish a flood goal at your agency. You can have a flood coordinator who helps all the staff in your agency keep on top of all the flood changes to focus and train folks at your agency to sell flood. And one of the interesting things that you can do through floodsmart.gov is to sign up for the Let's Talk Flood newsletter. That is certainly available to you and to everyone in your agency. And of course, we hope that you're also receiving the regular flood communication email blast that Right Flood sends out as well. So you're going to take the time to discuss with each person that comes into your agency for any kind of property coverage, Coverage, you want to talk to them about flood because it's worth it to them. It's worth it to you as well because you're going to establish a much stronger relationship with your client when you're worried about covering all of their flood risks. They're going to realize that you're looking at seriously at their flood risk. You're going to help them understand where they are on the flood map. Uh, after every flood or as part of every flood quote on the right flood website, when you get the flood zone information as you've requested it through our website, uh, below that will be a flood zone map. So you can actually show each person when you're doing their quote the map of where their property sits in relationship to the high risk zone or the low risk zone. And one thing you want to make sure everyone realizes that even if their property is in the low to moderate risk category, it doesn't mean that they have no flood risk. In fact, the NFIP keeps track of all the claims payments made and the disaster assistance money is paid on specific properties, and they track the flood risk of those properties, and they've identified that 20% of the properties in the low to moderate risk flood zones can suffer a flood. So if you're offering the flood map and the flood quote to all those folks in the low to moderate risk zone, they need to understand that because it says low risk doesn't mean that it's no risk. You're also going to 
take time to clarify their questions about the flood reform and about map changes that may be happening in their in your community. This is what qualifies you as an expert because you know how the flood reforms affect them. You're going to know how map changes will affect them. And you're going to be able to help them through all the mixed messages that they're going to get about flood map changes and about flood reforms. Specifically, the lender messaging may change when their flood zone changes to low risk. And they need to understand that the lender messages don't really dictate the need for flood insurance. They need to look at their own risk personally. They need to consider their own financial situation as to how they would recover should a flood uh, come and impact their entire property. And they, they can only make their own decision rather than listening to the lender messages about whether they need flood or they don't. And then, of course, should they choose to self-insure, meaning that they're rejecting the flood policy and the quote that you've prepared for them, they just need to understand they're self-insuring and that you're going to need to get that waiver signed because they're going to remember that you and them spoke about flood insurance if they ever get flooded, but they're not going to remember that they chose to reject that coverage. So you're going to want that in your file. So flood graphics, and they're pretty prevalent all throughout the floodsmart.gov website, and you'll be getting lots of graphics through Write Flood, through our email news blasts. Um, you're going to see a lot of widgets and fact sheets and videos that you can put um, on your various Facebook page, flood-specific web pages, newsletters, to help people see their own personal situation in the in the flood loss and what it would impact them. And the flood graphics are very important because they help people see themselves in the graphics. Two videos that are particularly interesting to me, one is just a one-minute story that says, the water got inside and ruined everybody's everything. I thought that was a very interesting quote that everybody's everything got ruined. And that's kind of the disaster frame of mind that you're in when when flood hits your house. Also, the two views of the same flood is another video, and, and you'll be able to watch both of these as part of our resources page uh, after today's webinar. Two views of the same flood flood shows what happens when one person has flood coverage, one person does not have flood coverage, and, and how they are impacted and, and how they recover from flood. And one of the important statements from that one, the quote I took was, um, things are a lot more difficult without insurance. I am paying a mortgage plus paying for somewhere else to live. And that struck me because the financial situation of having to do that is not something that many of us can can be comfortable with for without flood insurance. So you've made it personal, and your person is looking at their flood risk, and you're helping them to decide how they're impacted by the flood reforms and the flood map changes. And you're going to know which part of the NFIP, and there are many programs within the NFIP that can help each individual person based on their risk. The first thing you can sell is the preferred risk policy. That means the person is in the low to moderate risk flood zone area, and they're going to be able to get a preferred risk policy very easily. You can quote it really quickly. It does not require elevation figures because they are in the low to moderate risk zone. You need to find out from them if they have any knowledge of flood losses previously at their location. And if they have none, they qualify for preferred risk. And you'll find out whether they have a basement or not. And then simply using our flood quoting tools, you'll be able to do a zone determination to confirm that they are in the low risk zone. And you can then quote them a policy whether they're a homeowner, business owner, or renter, if they're residential or commercial, they are all subject to the preferred risk policy if they're in the low risk flood zone. And for a property owner, a homeowner, single home, you can purchase 
$250,000 of building coverage and $100,000 of contents coverage for uh $414 maximum for the maximum coverage available. So $414 is not a lot of premium on an annual basis when you consider that the average flood claim has been reported by the NFIP to be $47,000 to recover from the average flood loss. So $414 a year doesn't sound like much coverage, uh, much premium for that amount of coverage. And you can show them the flood map following the quote shows how close they are to the high risk zone because they may be in the low risk zone or their house may be in the low risk zone, but there could even be a high risk zone as close as on their same lot that would be impacting their property. So if they don't meet the preferred risk policy because they're in the high risk zone, it's possible that they could qualify for the PRP extension program, which is the program that allows folks that that experience a flood map change where they move from the low risk area where their property was likely built when it was in the low risk area and then remapped and moved into the high risk area if the remapping occurred since October 1 of 2008. If they fall into that category as being part of a new flood risk mapping from low risk to high risk, they do not require an elevation certificate and they can qualify and get the PRP premium rating as part of the extension program for as long as the extension program period extends. Now, right now, it's ongoing within the NFIP, and we're not sure when they're going to do the conversion to regular, but at some point when the PRP extension program reverts to the regular program, they will encounter a premium increase. But the, the extension program allows them to grandfather the X zone where their property was originally built in the X zone before it was switched to high risk zone of A or V. They'll still get to grandfather the X zone, and so their premium will not really rise to the point that it would if they were in the regular program in the high risk zone. They are still going to qualify for some of the discounts of the PRP program. So that's the second policy program that you can work with your clients. Another thing that can happen if they don't qualify for the PRP and they don't qualify for the PRP extension, it's possible that they could be uh, entitled to purchase the subsidized rates policy. The Homeowners Flood Insurance Affordability Act brought back the subsidized rates, and as of March 21st of 2014, they can now qualify for subsidized rates if they are in the high risk zone of A or V and their property was built before the flood program started in their town, built before the flood codes were actually established. We call that pre-FIRM. FIRM stands for Flood Insurance Rate Map. They are eligible for the subsidized rates, again, without need of an elevation certificate. Now, it may turn out that if they got an elevation certificate, they could possibly qualify for lower rates, but they don't have to have that elevation certificate to get the policy. Uh, also, those policies are subject to a premium increase every year, but the Homeowners Flood Insurance Affordability Act set that premium increase to be no more than 18% premium increases annually if it's the primary home, and that would include a condo unit that it's the primary home, meaning you're living there more than 51% of the time, or if they are a secondary home, commercial repetitive loss, or substantially improved property, their premium increase annually is capped at 25%. So 
the premium caps are serving to stabilize the real estate market so buyers and sellers know they get, get subsidized rates again and they can prepare for how those premiums will increase on an annual basis. So that's the third type of situation that the NFIP helps you to sell flood insurance for each individual person. Another choice would be after a map change. Map change from low risk to high risk or from high risk to low risk, either way, affects the policy uh, that your person may have in place or if he chooses to purchase a new policy. So you're going to want your staff and you to be trained to offer real solutions when people call your agency, if you are the flood expert in your town and map changes occur, you can expect calls where each person identifies they're moving into the high risk zone or they're moving out of the high risk zone. You're going to be able to discuss the flood reforms with those people that are moving into the high-risk zone. You're going to be able to discuss the preferred risk policy for people who are moving out of the high-risk zone because they can convert their existing policy from high-risk zone to PRP. And they're going to want to retain that policy because you'll explain that the low risk doesn't mean no risk. Still 20% chance of flooding in the low to moderate risk flood zones. You can generate a handout about how map changes affect flood insurance. The handout is helpful for your, your staff to be able to discuss the changes, but you can also provide it to the general public when you go to any of the outreach meetings that are held when flood maps often change. You can put them on the website, your blog, your newsletter, and you can get these handouts and customize them for your agency, put your agency contact information on it through our bulletin board under the Map Change Toolkit. Bring your staff up to date about the Homeowners Flood Insurance Affordability Act messaging so that when people call concerned about if they will get high premiums, they'll be able to discuss the fact that subsidized policies are again available, that they don't have to have the elevation certificate requirement, and that they are subject to a premium cap of 18% maximum for primary homes and 25% for non-primary residences and building, I mean, sorry, business residences and uh, repetitive loss and substantially improved locations. And also, you're going to sell the value of retaining their flood policy after their policy converts to a PRP policy, preferred risk policy. Sure, they're going to be in the low to moderate risk zone, but once they recognize that they previously were in the high risk zone, so now they're not that far away from a low risk, from a high risk zone, and they're still subject to at least 20%, according to the statistics of uh, properties in the low to moderate risk zone do or will suffer a flood. The policy not required messaging that they will often hear when a flood zone changes to a low risk zone really relates to the lender requirements for their regulations and shouldn't really dictate to a prudent owner whether he feels his risk is enough to purchase flood insurance and if his financial consideration would mean that he would need that flood insurance to uh, recover should his property hit be hit by a flood loss. So we've seen already three or four different ways to sell flood insurance on a personal level. What if your person is in the high risk zone and his property was built when the flood codes were in effect? Then he's going to have an elevation certificate. When the house is built in that situation, it they get an elevation certificate as part of the building process. And that's going to allow you as the agent to give them a personalized flood risk evaluation because this surveyor completing the elevation certificate has identified the height of all the risk factors of their home, their home characteristics. So you use the elevation certificate and you use the right flood quoting tools to 
put all the information into the system to analyze the risk and determine the correct premium, the risk-based premium for that property owner. So they're going to know what the risk is for their home, and they're going to know that there's not a question as to what type of premium they're going to have. They're going to be able to determine it exactly because they have benefit of the elevation certificate. The Homeowner's Flood Insurance Affordability Act indicates that there will be a premium increase every year between 5 and 18%. But folks that are already using elevation figures to do the quoting are fully aware of the risk-based rating of their home, and they're going to be in the lower end, the 5% end of the future premium increases that will incur on their property because they're already risk-based rated. The reason those increases are coming on is to bring it up to risk-based rating, but folks with elevation certificate figures are already at the risk-based rating. If it turns out that their property is subject to the subsidized rate, when they have the elevation figures put in, they'll get the lower of the two. So our system will automatically compare the elevation figures and the subsidized rates. And if the person is eligible for subsidized rates, meaning their property was built before the flood program was enacted in their town, and they're in the high risk zone, they're eligible for subsidized rates, they will automatically get the lower of the two rates. So getting that elevation certificate is always an advantage because you put it in, they get a personalized rate, they know their risk. If the subsidized rate happens to be lower, they'll get that until it raises up to the point where it's above what their elevation figures get them. So knowing their flood risk becomes a sales advantage to their property. There's no more guesswork as to whether they're going to be affected by those high premiums. They know what their premium rate is going to be. And as an agent, the right flood quoting tool walks you through the elevation certificate underwriting steps to help you develop this accurate quote that you're going to give to your client. The system has the underwriting built into it. There are, is information behind each question. We're going to ask the questions that help to determine the compliant policy that you're going to want to sell to your client customer so that your policies will be ready with the correct premium and will also be ready should there ever be a flood claim needing to be completed on that. So you can close the flood sale by making it personal. You're going to work to find the best type of NFIP coverage for them, be it the preferred risk, maybe it's the preferred risk extension, maybe it's the subsidized rates. Maybe it's changes after a map change, or maybe it's using the elevation certificate. It's going to be the best coverage for them, and you're going to show them that you are giving them their personal risk information. You can overcome their risk objections by listening to what they say and letting them know that flood happens everywhere across the country and that just because it hasn't flooded in 30 years doesn't mean that they are not uh, having changes in their neighborhood and changes to the weather patterns and their water drainage that would impact their personal property. But some folks still are not ready to purchase flood insurance. They still need additional time. That's when you as the agent should make use of the flood-specific waiver. It's a rejection waiver that helps you open the conversation again to let them know the things they need to know about flood risk. If they choose to not purchase flood insurance, they should be aware that flood insurance is not covered by homeowners, that low risk doesn't mean no risk, still a 20% chance of flooding in the low to moderate risk zones, and dis disaster relief is most likely a loan. So they could end up with two mortgages on their home if they have to borrow to be able to recover from their flood insurance loss, from their flood loss. So if they still choose to self-insure, and that's kind of a, a scary thing for an insured to decide that they're going to self-insure, and if they do, 
you as the agent need to show them that you are taking their flood risk seriously, and that's why you need them to sign the flood waiver for your file. You feel that if they ever do suffer a flood loss in the future, you're going to want everyone to be aware that you did offer them that flood policy, and it was their decision to self-insure for flood. And that protects your agency E&O and shows them that you're taking their flood risk seriously. Another best practice that many agents do is they follow back with all those people who rejected their flood sale after about 30 days, and there is a marketing letter that we offer that covers this specific situation. They follow up in about 30 days after they've purchased their property because that's when things have settled in, they've seen their mortgage and their budget, and they can then make another decision if they feel they can then decide on flood insurance. So the best time to sell flood insurance is always now. If you let it be known that your agency is the flood expert in your town, and with all the flood insurance awareness out there, you're going to find people come to you for flood quotes. You're going to use the visuals that will help them to know that flood insurance is going to be um, protection for their property, their most important investment, which is their home and business. You can show them videos, maps, brochures, everything that helps you to put them in the personal situation of considering their own flood loss. If you make it personal to every property that you quote, and you're known as the flood expert, selling right flood policy, you can sell with confidence, whether it's the preferred risk policy, whether it's the flood reform subsidized policy, whether it's giving them a personalized quote with their elevation certificate figures, or if it comes down to rocking the rejection waiver, you are giving them the full flood picture. And with map changes and weather events occurring in the neighborhood, you have many opportunities to make that flood sale. Today, I'm going to be offering you two pages worth of resources, links that you can use to train your staff and to get up to date on how the map changes or flood reforms may have impacted your neighborhood, and you will be prepared to sell that flood insurance. So looking at the two pages here of resources, you'll be able to download these pages and Visit the links to learn more about how to discuss the flood policy with your clients, what the new flood reforms mean, and how to close the flood insurance sale, as well as get some brochures for your agency, look over the sample marketing letters, and watch a few of the videos, and maybe have the videos on a loop in your agency on a spare monitor um, so folks can have a few minutes to watch what this flood videos mean to them and understand the personal situation that flood insurance can be. We thank you very much for attending our on-demand flood video. Um, we communicate efforts uh, on the NFIP topics as a convenience to write flood agents. If I've inadvertently miscommunicated, I apologize, and we defer to the flood manual and the official statements on the topic. I've expressed my own opinions here, not the opinions of Right Flood, the NFIP, or FEMA, and the, your Right Flood marketing department and your regional sales manager is available along with your team at the Flood Processing Center to answer any of your continuing questions about selling flood insurance. Thank you again for choosing Right Flood for all your flood insurance needs. I'm Dolores Glass with Right Flood and hoping that you'll have many opportunities to sell the flood policy. Thank you very much for your time and attention.